So we are going to take the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of dx over 2 plus tangent x. Now, I first saw this problem when I was doing a math competition. This was the last problem, and when I looked at it, I said, I know what to do. I will try Weierstrass substitution. Don't do Weierstrass substitution. It will take you so long, there will be so much partial fractions, and you'll mess one thing up, and it'll screw up your whole answer. I would not recommend doing Weierstrass substitution on this. But we have a tangent x in the denominator, and there's no secant squared on the top to help us out. So it seems like leaving this integral in terms of tangent x isn't really going to get us anywhere. So let's try multiplying the top and bottom by cosine of x and see if that gives us any ideas. We have the integral from 0 to pi over 4, and then cosine x dx over. And then I'll write this sign first. So tangent x times cosine x is sine, and then plus 2 cosine x. Now, there's still not something we can obviously do. We can't substitute sine or cosine because we don't have the right thing in the numerator. But we can look at the bottom. By the harmonic addition theorem, which I made a video about earlier, we can write sine x plus 2 cosine x as c cosine of x plus alpha. And if we do this, then the denominator becomes only one thing, just this cosine, and that is going to help us out when we do this integral. So let's see if we can figure out some information about c and alpha. Well, from my video on the harmonic addition theorem, we know the coefficient of sine is 1, so we have 1 squared plus 2 squared is going to equal c squared. And this is going to get us that c equals the square root of 5. Now that we know this, we can look at some information about alpha. We know that cosine alpha is going to equal b, whatever is the coefficient of the cosine, divided by c. So in this case, 2 over the square root of 5. And sine alpha is going to be negative 1 over the square root of 5. Now, there isn't a way that we can solve for alpha like this without using a calculator. So what we're going to do is just leave ourselves with this information and see if we can come back to use it later. So I've written the root 5 right here, and we have our information about alpha. Now let's plug this into the integral. We have the integral from 0 to pi over 4, cosine x dx over. This becomes root 5 cosine x plus alpha. Now what we can do is substitute u equals x plus alpha, which means that x becomes u minus alpha, du equals dx. And now let's see what happens. We have 0 plus alpha is alpha. Pi over 4 plus alpha is our top bound. And then we get cosine of u minus alpha over root 5 cosine u du. And now we have just a cosine u on the bottom. But this is awesome because on the top, we have cosine u minus alpha. But we can expand this out using the addition formula for the cosine. So what this has done is it's allowed us to split up the numerator instead of splitting up the denominator. And now we can do this integral. So let's expand out this cosine here. We get the integral from alpha to pi over 4 plus alpha. First, we get cosine alpha cosine u, and then over root 5 cosine u du, and then plus the integral from alpha to pi over 4 plus alpha, and then we have sine alpha sine u over root 5 cosine u du. And we can do each of these integrals. On the first one, we have a cosine u on the top, cosine u on the bottom, those cancel out. And in fact, cosine alpha over root 5 with respect to u is just a constant. So in fact, all that we get for the first integral is we get cosine alpha over root 5. And then we have evaluated u evaluated at pi over 4 plus alpha minus alpha. That's just going to be pi over 4. And now let's look at the second integral. This one is also pretty easy, because we have a sine u on the top, cosine u on the bottom. So if we substitute w equals cosine u, then we get dw equals negative sine u du. So over here, we have a negative sine. We could move that to the other side. This becomes a minus integral from. We have the cosine of alpha is our bottom bound. We know that's 2 over root 5. So the integral from 2 over root 5 and then cosine of pi over 4 plus alpha, we're going to have to do a little more work. Co 
cosine of pi over 4 plus alpha. What does that equal? Well, we can expand this out. Cosine alpha cosine pi over 4 minus sine alpha sine pi over 4. And now we have cosine alpha is 2 over root 5. So we get 2 over root 5 root 2 over 2. And then minus sine alpha is negative 1 over root 5. So this is a plus 1 over root 5 root 2 over 2. Now, what we want to do here is we can factor out root 2 over root 5 is in both expressions. So you have root 2 over root 5. And then what's left is we have 2 over 2 is 1. And then we have 1 half. So 1 plus 1 half is just 3 halves. And now we can use that as our upper bound. So we have 3 halves root 2 over root 5. And then the inside of our integral is just going to be what we have on the top. dw is our sine u du. And then we have sine alpha divided by root 5w. So we're almost there. We just need to do a couple more steps. First, cosine alpha is 2 over root 5. So we have 2 over and then root 5 times another root 5 becomes 5 times pi over 4. And then for the second part, we have minus sine alpha over root 5. Well, sine alpha is negative 1 over root 5. So this is a plus. And then 1 over root 5 times root 5 is once again just 5. And then we have this integral. We're going to get natural log of absolute value w evaluated at 3 halves root 2 over root 5, and then 2 over root 5 on the bottom. So let's take a second to just look at this natural log. So we get natural log of 3 halves root 2 over root 5 for the top bound, minus, for the lower bound, natural log of 2 over root 5. And now we can bring these two together. We get natural log of the first divided by the second, so 3 halves root 2 over root 5, and then divided by 2 over root 5. We see that root 5s are going to cancel. And then let's look at this inside expression by itself, too, because this is still kind of confusing. We get 3 times, and then we have divided by 2 here, and then divided by 2 here. So this is going to be divided by 4, and then a root 2 on the top. And we want to simplify this a little bit. Let's multiply by root 2 on the top and bottom. So we get 3, and then root 2 times root 2 is going to be 2 over 4 root 2. And we can simplify this even more, because we know 2 over 4 is just going to be 1 half. And the last thing we can do here is we can have 3, and then divided by 2 root 2 is the same as 2 to the power of 3 halves. So we go back to our natural log. We're going to get the natural log of 3 over 2 to the 3 halves. And we can simplify this even more by breaking it up a little bit. So we get natural log 3 minus natural log of 2 to the 3 halves is the same as 3 halves natural log of 2. And now we're in the home stretch. We go back to our original integral and just write this stuff in. So what we're going to get is 2 over 4 is 1 half. So we have pi over 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 fifth natural log 3 minus 1 fifth times 3 halves natural log 2. Do a little simplification here. 3 halves times 1 fifth is going to be 3 tenths natural log 2. So if you get an integral that looks like this, you have cosines and sines. It doesn't really make sense, but you have a sine x plus something cosine x on the bottom. The harmonic addition theorem is here to help us out. We can do a u substitution. We can expand it out. And we can get pi over 10 plus 1 fifth natural log 3 minus 3 tenths natural log 2 as our answer.